I think my my first experience with technology dates back to the days of Super Mario, where you play all of these games and okay. all of that. I think yeah. Nintendo games are not there, yeah. Right. That's it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Educative Sessions, a podcast series with people in the developer world about their coding experiences. This is powered by Educative, which makes it easy for authors to provide interactive and adaptive courses for software developers. My name is Li Ngo. Uh, my guest today is Ingbede Alike, who is a software engineer trainee in Java for Decagon, and also a contributor to our Edpresso community platform as well. And today we're going to talk about mindset over matter and how he learned to learn to code uh, by changing it. Uh, Ingbede, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Nice uh, having me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Me. Thank you. Very excited to have you as well. Um, let's get right into <laughs> the beginnings of it all. And I want to talk about your life in Nigeria uh, growing up, especially as a child. Um, when you were growing up, what did you dream of? What were your hopes and aspirations? Right. Thank you very much. Um, I think it's a very relatable question that you just asked me. Um, growing up in Nigeria, my neighborhood was characterized with children coming out to the street to play mm -hmm. and not over the internet or video games. That is the kind of setting I come from. Um, my street also is a street that is uh, coming to and fro from school because many parents cannot afford cars to go pick up their children from school. Mm -hmm. That is where I come from. That is who I am. And so uh, time we have evolved over time, Nigeria has changed. I think uh, my reference, my point of reference is to like maybe 10 to 20 years ago and things have really changed, but uh, not as expected because there is uh, there's some sort of population explosion and uh, the, the planning process on the part of government uh, have not been really uh, it's not it's not it's not conversant with the the the, the population exp uh, explosion and mm -hmm. so there are so many things that have gone wrong over the years uh, we have not really grown as a people as a nation the way we expect we are expected to grow the, the index is are there the world knows about it and so that is the kind of country I come from. Mm -hmm. And um, we've really, really tried. There's a new level of consciousness among the, the youths, okay? Because they believe that, um, talking about mindset, because when I have my last discussion with you, um, talking about mindset, right. um, I am I'm part of the school of thought that says that uh, skills and knowledge can be gained through effort. I don't believe in having the talent Mm -hmm. I believe also in applying that right effort, applying mm -hmm. the effort with that mindset, like uh, a, gro a growth mindset, having a growth mindset. Right. Well, so let's, that uh, I, I want to, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves because before um, you got to that point where you had to discover that mindset, I also, I find it interesting that, you know, you grew up actually very similar to how I grew up and most people grew up, um, right. no technology, right? We all had to play outside and it was dangerous because I got hurt all the time. Um, I don't know what it's like to play inside on phones. Um, and I think only in my teenager years and beyond that I discover internet and suddenly that's where I've been ever since. Um, I want to know when you first uh, discovered code, right? And when you first discovered technology. Uh, so prior to developing the mindset, I want to understand uh, what were your first experiences with the technology itself? Hey, uh, I think my... My first experience with technology dates back to the days of Super Mario, where you play all of these games and okay. all of that. I think yeah. Nintendo games are not there, yeah. Okay, that's uh, awesome. I was always fascinated by the, the concept behind all of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I have a very curious mind, not to blow my trumpet, but I have a very curious mind. And I, I tend to ask a lot of questions. But the problem then for me was lack of access to the internet. So I didn't have access to some of these uh, I call it resources mm -hmm. to to quench my curiosity, right. and so I I I started out reading books, okay, about programming, QBasic, and all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't really make much progress. It was until I went to the university. I got into university, 
I, I wanted to study computer science in university, but uh, given the fact that uh, the it, it, some of the computer science courses in my country here is not practical based, so I just had to just move away from that and I opted for chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. But I think what helped me was that I had an encounter with with uh, coding when I was in my second year. Okay, I started out learning uh, as part of our curriculum. Okay, we learned Fortran, learned Fortran, and um, MATLAB, and so I was able to use. Ma yes, I was able to. Well, you use were learning. Uh, you were learning MATLAB and Fortran in your curriculum. Yes, we do. We did. That's like. With respect, that's so old school. It's you know, <laughs> these are like the, these are like fifty year old languages. Like you didn't, <laughs> okay, that is that. Oh, I don't even know how that's fun. So I mean, talk about mindset. All right. Um, so tell me a little bit about. So right now you're learning technology, right? You're in your um, program, and this is not when you were in school. This was in the Decagon program, right? Is this where we are? Yes. Now? Okay. Yes. So this is this is how I evolved. This mm -hmm. is how I evolved. This is how I got into programming. Okay. Like it was like my first experience. I could use MATLAB codes and uh, Fortran codes to generate uh, reaction constants. Sure. Because I'm a chemical engineer. I was I studied chemical engineering. That's right. So I could work with graphs easily, analyze data, and all of that. So mm -hmm. I got to understand the power of technology, mm -hmm. and from there, I, I think in my final year, I was to work on my material and energy balance. So there there was this long calculation that we do hand calculations we do, I had to translate it to Microsoft Excel using mm. spreadsheets. Mm. And that alone saved me hundreds of hours of writing with my hands. Mm. And it was like a new knowledge, like everybody loved it. And my supervisor was so impressed by the concept. And so that was when I had that revelation, like, oh, there is a lot that I can achieve through technology. I can actually save time. I can actually save money, right? Mm. I can actually add value through technology. It was then I, after graduation, although I, st I, I didn't get into tech immediately, after graduation, I did a lot of jobs. But I, won I wasn't content with what I was doing because right. it involved a lot of repetitive tasks. I have this mindset of learning every time. I want to mm. learn to improve myself every time. So right. I saw that the best fit for me was to go into uh, information technology and here is that uh, here, here am i Wonderful. so i got into tech uh, into decagon uh, at first i started out with uh, python mm -hmm. i built a project with python i i know i because of my engineering background i started out doing data analytics i work with numpy uh, w and um, right. w and so if i may Pandas. i just want to jump in quickly because okay. you know now you're you're jumping into python and a lot of different uh libraries and right. uh tools that are used within python um, but yes. you came from a me mechanical engineering background chemical. So, yeah mechanical so oh chemical engineering excuse me yes so let's uh just to be clear like what is the difference between that form of engineering and software engineering in your opinion um, I, I think the difference, the difference with that is, uh, I think it, it has to do with tangibility. Okay. One is more tangible. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Please continue. Yes. I think, yeah. I think chemical engineering is more tangible in terms of bringing things to life. Things it would, it would physically, you could feel. Mm. Okay. Like it's hard, they are hands on. Okay. You could design a reactor mm -hmm. and then you have that reactor, uh, you, can, you could operate that reactor physically. But uh, I think in software engineering, it has to do with um, in chemical engineering perspective, I, I would put it as a form of control, all right? Okay. Like, yes, I can I would put it like applying software engineering in chemical engineering, mm -hmm. okay? You could put it as a form of control. Okay. And also you could use it to automate, to okay. automate processes, all right? Okay. And improve processes. So software engineering, Okay, makes make processes better. Mm -hmm. They make processes uh, better. So that is one. I think that is just my my difference uh, between software engineering and chemical engineering that I know. Okay, thank you. Got it. Got it. Fascinating. You know. Um. You know, it's very clear to me as you're talking about your own work now. Um, that maybe that working in something tangible versus working in something. 
uh, more conceptual, uh, perhaps in software engineering, seems to work better with your mind or with your imagination, perhaps. Because uh, yes. uh, with respect, it sounds like somebody like control is not your interest. You're much more interested in perhaps something else. Uh, if you can believe it, Ingmede, we've actually come to the end of the questions that we've had. We went through them very quickly. Uh, right. But I want to talk to you a little bit more about you. Uh, so I'm going to give you an opportunity to do what we call here at Educative is a shameless plug, which is to talk about something that's important to you. You can talk about your experiences at Decagon. Really, it's up to you. So the floor is yours. Go ahead. All right. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to meet with me. And also, um, I'm very grateful. Uh, my time at the Carbon has been very, 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 very satisfactory. I, 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 I'm, I think this is one of the best decisions I've taken since graduation. Uh, I've learned a lot of things since I came here. Uh, I've really improved. I started Java not quite long. I started Java I started, because I had my background in Python, but I started Java not quite long. And right now I can start a project from scratch and then to completion. So I am very, very, very grateful for this particular opportunity that I have at Decagon, and also for me to even meet with uh, a platform such as yours. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I would like to say that uh, I'm open to opportunities. Okay. Because if, yeah, if you have opportunities, whether it has to do with programming, right? I, I, I can take a junior software in my role, uh, even whether internship or what, anything whatsoever, or oh, a technical writing role, I can do that. Okay, thank you very much. Fantastic. All right, um, Imide Aglike, uh, thank you so much for taking the time today to speak with us from all the way from Nigeria to share a little bit about your life story and just your passion and love uh, for coding. We re really do appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody who is listening or watching us right now. You can find more videos of us on YouTube, or you can look us up at any platform of podcasting under Educative Sessions. Yes, that's accurate. And lastly, if you want to learn a little bit more about what we do at Educative, check us out at educative.io, or you can check out the kind of work that Ingbede and others do at educative.io slash edpresso uh, to see their amazing content that they share with the rest of the community. So for all of us here at Educative, thank you all so much and happy learning. Bye-bye now. All right, thanks for having me, Lee. Hope you enjoyed that session. This episode is available on YouTube and also on many podcast platforms. If you'd like to be part of Educative Sessions, the form is open now to apply via the link below. You can also email me at lee at educative.io. Lastly, don't forget to like and comment on our content. Be sure to subscribe for us as well. And of course, you can learn more about us at educative.io. Happy learning.